projects, and that's mine. So and together we make mixed media. <laughs> 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 so um, if you're new to Comments Sold, um, we want to make sure you create your account. You can go to this website to create an account. But the best way to do it is to actually download our app. Um, it's Artistic Artifacts, and you can find it on your Apple um, App Store or your Google App Store. Um, once you sign in there, you do set up your account. Um, you can watch the video live. But when we're showing a product, there'll be a little thing up in the corner that says buy. You hit buy, and it goes into your cart. You can. Um, check out and it's all on, on one um, but either way works so enjoy it whether you're on Facebook I think this should be on Instagram it should be, it should be on Instagram and <laughs> the app so um, any questions for those of you who are not on either the app or if you're on Facebook only and it's fewer and fewer people I think that actually yeah. do Facebook only is um, if you see something, if you put sold on Facebook, you will actually get a message that tells you that you need to go into the website, the um, comment sold website and, and, follow, and follow up that way. So um, it used to be that you just said sold and we would follow up with you, but this will actually direct you, you will get a message. We encourage you not to message us on Facebook because we're monitoring um, th the items directly on our comment sold app. So don't try to message us unless you're commenting and then we'll, we'll respond there. Um, any questions that you, you see yet, Kyle? No, oh, I don't get the questions, Jen does. Oh, okay. <laughs> any She'll questions? No. Okay, all right. We have a Canadian joining us. Oh, Yay. great. Ooh. Should we introduce our, our uh, participants tonight? Um, sure. I'm going to pan around a little bit, Kyle. Mm -hmm. We actually have an out-of-town visitor. Cheryl is from Michigan. <laughs> and uh, one of the things that really pleases us is how many um, people make artistic artifacts a destination if they come into the D.C. area for work or to visit family. So it's always a real thrill. Um, and we would ask anybody who's listening, if you ever make a trip here, please introduce yourself to us. We'd love to say hi. And that's Suzanne and Diane that just were waving at you. They're creative minds with us. And we got Crystal isolated over here. She is uh, playing with her die cutters and embossers. We'll show you a bit about that. Um, she actually is using a lot of our Indian cotton rag paper. We have new packages of that for you. And it works beautifully in these machines, so you're going to get really excited when you see what we've got. And it's all Tim Holtz products, who we love very much. <laughs> but we don't sell the machines, we sell the paper. But we know <laughs> a lot of you have, you, you have your die cutters, you have your crickets, you have your embossers, there's a lot out there, and um, we're really excited to see how well our products work with it, so we wanted to show that to you. So how we're going to do this tonight is we're going to do a little bit of tag team. We're going to show some fabric projects, and then we'll do some mixed media projects, and then and we'll go through. So that there'll be a, a little bit of going back and forth, so no matter whether you like one or the other, and hopefully we'll convince you that you can do both. We're also going to go through the holidays, since this is handmade holidays, we're going to start with fall and Thanksgiving, we'll get into winter, and then we'll get into Christmas. Um, so we want to cover all the bases. We don't think that it's just one season, it's a long season. And um, if you follow our newsletter, you'll know that we're actually doing a solstice. Solstice watch, winter solstice watch. We We've got eight weeks. To eight week, weeks, so please sign up for our newsletter. Um, you can sign up at artisticartifacts.com. Each week we're going to have a special product or line of product or collection of products on sale for, the, for that week. So this week it's Liberty, um, both the sewing accessories as well as the fabric. So. Uh, and that's 15% off 15 until the next off. newsletter comes out. Yeah. And then there'll be something else next week. Yeah. So stay tuned. All right, I'm going to start with fall, Thanksgiving. And um, 
The first is um, this item, it's a bundle. It's called uh, Reflections, Autumn Reflections. And it includes kind of a border print, which at first it was like, oh my goodness, what am I going to do with that border print? Well, let me show you <laughs> how we've used it. And part of what my goal has been is people say, well, what do I do with a, a bundle of five ha half yards of fabric? So that's what I'm going to tell you tonight. So I started with this. So this was um, a pretty simple pattern. I don't think we have this anymore, but you can see it's really rectangles and blocks. It's using the five um, half yard fabrics. And then I added some of these, is it bumbleberries? Uh, that is bumbleberry. Bum yes. Bumbleberry. So that's not included in the, in the five yard, but we've got some great blenders that you can add to if you need more fabric. Huge range of colors for the uh, bumbleberries and other blenders. They really work well with almost anything. And so here's another color of the bumbleberries, but here's where I put the border. So this is a reversible table runner. <laughs> but I had fabrics left over. So I decided that on my table, or maybe this will be a hostess gift, I used the modern Japanese rice pouch pattern that, if you've watched us before, you know that I love doing this pattern. It's by Casey Stevens. But instead of putting the tabs and strings to make it, I've got a bread basket. I left the tabs off um, and the strings, I folded the edge down and I've got a bread basket. So um, you could put some napkins in there, or uh, the other thing I thought would make a, a fun thing to do is to take a, a potted plant with a foil around it, stick that in there, and you've got something for your centerpiece. And, of course, well, wait, there's more. <laughs> your table needs, <laughs> your table needs a trivet. So I used the Creative Grids 10 inch uh, log cabin trim tool. It's a great tool. It gives you various options on how to do your log cabins, whether you're doing courthouse square in the corner, traditional log cabin. Um, but I use the fabrics again. And then because it's gonna be a hot plate, I added some Inselbride and we do have Inselbride on there tonight. Um, it just gives you a little bit of more ins uh, insulation this is not intended to be a hot pad or an oven pad, so um, I read that some people say you use two layers of Inselbrite. I mean, I just Googled Inselbrite and looked at the instructions, and I've got one layer and one layer of, um, of batting, and then I'll put a backing on it. And, yet again, we're not finished. I had leftover border fabric, so I put some Misty Fuse, which is a nice uh, double-sided, very lightweight fusible, layered some of my fabrics onto um, uh, greeting cards, and I've got my Thanksgiving cards with my fabric. And Sharon's going to show you this in a little bit when we get to the, uh, some of our mixed media. But this is printed on vellum, and you could actually put um, a, a Thanksgiving greeting on the card. And, and she'll talk about that when we get there. So the bundle that I talked about had five fabrics, inc including the, um, the border print. But I'm also looking at the... Uh, this would make a nice fall tablecloth or, or table setting. This is uh, Figo Summer End. I'm actually have this at home and I'm going to do something. This one is Della, uh, Dear Stella Pumpkin Spice. Those are fun fabrics. And I, actually in my stash at home have another bumbleberries and I'm adding that orange color to it. That's I, perfect. Um, 
I'm not sure what colorway that was, but it was the perfect color to put a little pop in there. So we've got that one. Um, I think we, we have get to see how many different projects can come out of just a okay. few, yeah, <laughs> few half yards of fabric. So here's five half yards. This is Earth Made uh, Paradise. Um, this is a glorious. I actually made a quilt of this earlier, but um, I might have to do a table a it's, table it's runner. So the rich purples and burgundies. It's, it's such a really wonderful spread of color there. And then. These are fat quarters, these are not half yards. So what I was showing you before were, were half yard bundles. This one is a really fun one, it's Charlie Harper's. Everybody loves Charlie Harper's designs. And it's a fat quarter bundle. And let me see how many pieces. There's 15 pieces of some of his designs. And it's the harvest one, um, it's, it says 15 on the back. Um, it's Holiday Best, um, Volume 2. Oh, you know what? I picked up the wrong bundle. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> we have this one on our website. <laughs> Not on our app. <laughs> the other one does have 12, and that one is a fall one. So, <laughs> my bad. Jen, is it sitting on Julie's desk? And then we have another <laughs> one that's <laughs> I'll sneak away. <laughs> the Wild Coast by Mustard Beetle is also some really fun, <laughs> some really fun fall fabrics that would make that it would be fun to to use as a fall project. Well, this is beautiful for harvest. And so. this is Harvest Volume Two, <laughs> and there are twelve total pieces. <laughs> <laughs> it's live. <laughs> yeah, yep. But this is a really fun one. <laughs> and if you buy both, we have $75, with a $75 order, you get free shipping. And you can combine your orders from your comments sold tonight and an order from the website. Just let us know that you've ordered from both. And um, our shipping department will take care of that and make sure you get the, um, the free shipping. So who wouldn't want these two bundles of... Charlie Harper fabric. <laughs> Stop laughing at me, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> and before I finish and let it go to Sharon, we've got one more. Um, I included this one in the, the fall, the Thanksgiving. I think um, it really is, it uh, tran transcends the season. And we showed you this in Christmas in July. Um, Barbara and I did a challenge. She took this panel, I took the other panel. Both panels come in the full pack. Um, so we do have the complete festive bundle, but what we have done is we've taken the bundle apart and we have this panel and six fabrics to go with it. And a little bit later I'll show you the other panel and some, some fabrics to go with that. And this is the quilt that Barbara made she actually cut the wreaths out. She used fabrics, her, the batik fabrics in the background are not, um, they're actually from two seasons ago, so we don't have them currently. They were her stash, so yes, you can use your stash. And the fun part she did, I mean, she did absolutely gorgeous quilting on it, but she also used some painter's thread um, trim to applique her, her circles on. So we have that panel um, with the fabrics, and uh, when we go on a little bit later, if you don't use the, the fat quarters with the panel, I've got some other ideas on how you can use the fat quarters. It's all yours. Oh, wow. <laughs> so as Chris said, I'm, uh, uh, well, I am mixed media. I, I, I do enjoy uh, playing with fabric, but Chris, Chris does it so well. We're, we're certainly gonna let her do that. Um, I'm known for working, um, making ATCs. I love making ATCs. I love trading ATCs. So we did put some ATCs up for you. Um, we've been asked before. And so these are a really wonderful little set. This is craft and it comes in this great box. So not only are you getting 52 cards, really great quality rounded corners. Um, you could use these for Seth Apter's 52 pickup class, uh, you know, make a, make a 
card a week, all that kind of thing. Um, so you can keep a collection. You can trade them. Um, I started working on my November ATCs for our <laughs> well, peanut gallery over there. They're a member of our jams group. Um, and what I did was take, oh, excuse me. A question we have is, could you tell us what ATCs are? Oh, that's a good question and I'm sorry. They, that stands for artist trading cards. Um, it started about uh, the mid 70s, an artist, I believe in Switzerland, I can't remember or, or pronounce his name, but he uh, made just little miniature sort of business card size. And the idea was that, you know, you met another artist, you were able to give them a little piece of what you do. Um, the only rule to ATCs is the size, it's two and a half by three and three and a half. Um, any medium works. We get fabric ATCs, paper, cardstock. They can be um, collaged, painted. Uh, I've seen beautiful watercolor ones. It's um, it's a really fun medium to work in. And w the other thing that's great, it's great for experimenting with a new technique because it's not so overwhelming. I mean, you can you can deal with that size. You can do it. <laughs> So that's, that's ATCs, and what I did when I started my ATCs is I took one of our new products, which we have added to the comment sold, and that are these beautiful Jane Davenport collage sheets. These are printed on rice paper, uh, very similar to the Stamparia sheets that we sell. Um, and we've got several different sets, and these come in a pack. Stamparia is sold separately, so you get a sheet. The, you get two each sheets of the four designs. And so the design I selected was this fresh faced because they were these adorable, wonderful faces in all sizes. So that's the start of my ATCs. Let me just show you real quickly. These little, uh, the little girls ran along the end here. They are just super easy to trim out. I, they cut smooth, easy. Um, for the bigger ones, uh, bigger things, I, I, I wanted to be able to just um, isolate the, the heads and use them. You get a degree of transparency, but I love the, the craft look, the color. Um, this is just some collage fodder, a tiny little uh, punch, punched out some leaves. Um, and once this is dry, you, you adhere it with a, a gel medium. You can um, add color on top. So I, I may uh, take like some watercolor pencils or my colored pencils and get some color in the hair. Um, they also tear, so if you want an organic edge, you can easily tear them um, and if you want a precise but organic edge what you do is wet a paintbrush with some water and trace around the line that you want and that will soften it up enough that as you tear you can kind of tear along like say a very specific curve but you can see the really really beautiful vivid color I mean just imagine these for your art journals uh, placing them on a canvas so many different ways to use them reminds me of our uh, the paper dolls or the fabric dolls video yes that we did. yes very similar um, I don't know if I'm messing you up in order Jen sorry I'm not uh, okay. I'm not good <gasps> okay so uh, we we told you that crystal was over there sitting by herself even though we told her crystal please come over <laughs> and take a break we asked Crystal to help us demonstrate how beautifully, uh, how versatile our Indian rag, rag cotton paper is. This is all block printed in India. And what we have done, we, we've offered this before. We've had several different types of packs. We've now created smaller size packs that are somewhat color coordinated. So this is like, say for instance, your reds and your oranges. So we've got a variety of those, and it's a great way to be, you know, to have a specific theme going. So for autumn, I wanted to play with the reds and oranges. And so just, 
Crystal bought her die cutters and an embossing. And just look at the texture you get from this. Cuts beautifully. She's in love with it over there. Got a really, really great hand. And remember, you can stitch the rag paper. It really is going to behave a lot like a fabric. So this is just to show you that these re this really is the sheet. She has these very elaborate dies. And look at that detail. Is that not incredible? Either side is beautiful. I, I, I could not cut that with scissors. <laughs> this is a wonderful little treat bag. And again, this is one of our sh sheets of paper. And the texture is gorgeous. And this is the perfect size to present an ATC in. So. Or, a gift card. or a gift card. Yeah, great for the holidays. Uh, Crystal also managed to find a few scraps from Chris's fabric, and that wasn't easy to do because she used every bit of it. And uh, yeah, so the die cutters work beautifully with fabric too. Again, I think the fabric had. Um, it had a little bit of missing. fuse on, on the, the back, back so, so it can be once fused. It's cut out, you can fuse it to the card. So, and anyway, we're just we just are all exclaiming over these, how beautifully. And the great thing too is, as delicate as this is as a cut, the rag paper, the cotton rag, it's it, it's actually quite sturdy. So this will really kind of hold up to handling. Some papers would be pretty fragile and tear off. And of course, you've still got this great negative image. So we're not throwing anything away. We're tossing it over there for the fodder. I'm going to move it and let them play with it and see what they're up to. And I'm going to do a switch out here. And we, uh, we've also got our um, Strathmore Mixed Media cards and um, envelopes up there. So, oh, I didn't talk about their vellum. So that's a new product tonight. Yes. What we've done is created some, every year, uh, long-term customers know that Judy gives away at the holiday time on our blog, we always have some great vintage ephemera from her collection. She collects postcards and all this great stuff. And so what we've done is have them laser printed on vellum for you. So there's just a lot of ways that you, these would be great on cards and things and of course with vellum you can get this great look because you're going to see through it that's what we did here we did a little miniature piece and we've been experimenting with it hearing it and we have learned some things so you know a medium might be a bit too wet we've gotten some really great results with just a glue stick it has taken care of that um i thought i actually bought some over with me but i didn't but Anyway, there is uh, 22 different holiday images. There's Thanksgiving, there's just winter, there's Christmas, and there are New Year's in here. So it's a lot of fun, and we hope you'll enjoy that. And we've got some over there, I think, so maybe somebody over there has got something to show you. Say hi, hi ladies. Hello. 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 Hi, ladies. <laughs> All right, so what are we working on? We'll start over here. Well, I was doing this kind of collaged Christmas tree it can be just for a decoration or a larger note card, I mean, um, gift tag. And this was more of a gift tag. I just pulled it from the... From the pile. Right. Very cool. All right. And over here. <laughs> well, I made a Thanksgiving card. This is the vellum. And I figured out that if you put a glue stick on the back of this thing and then on the card itself and glue it down, it seems to stick. But it wants vellum when it gets slightly wet curls up <laughs> into a tiny roll. But anyway, uh, and now I'm making a little, I'm going to make a little Christmas card. But I'm in process. So I'm waiting for. Um, Thanksgiving to dry. Gotcha. And I used the marigold stencil butter on it. And I think it needs another layer so it looks more Thanksgiving y and not so Halloween y right <laughs> now. <laughs> so now I'm going on to Christmas and I'm using this is some of the uh, Indian paper with the stitching on it. 
And Crystal just brought all these cool little things that she cut with her cutter that are going to work really great with all of the stuff that Judy sells. Hey, Carl, let me show so you that's where we are with that. Right. Yeah, what other words? So again, no ball humbug, I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> so experimenting with the the heat, uh, the medium for the um, vellum. This one was this was a matte medium. Uh, this worked out pretty well. We it, it, there's a bit of a you know curve, but you can always flatten that out. This is where we got some confusion. So that might be a bit too wet. Uh, this was with the glue stick, and I think again, um, double double sided tape. Um, you know, um, glue sticks, things that are a bit drier seem like they'd be what what's going to work the best for that, and and keep the vellum in good shape and not buckling. But so. it's fun experimenting. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. That's yeah. But how you figure out what's going to work That's and what exactly isn't? Exactly right. I always flatten my cards under a pile of books yes. after I've made them. <laughs> You can use your bookshelf, your kids old college textbooks. Encyclopedias? Your yes. entire collection of Cape Facet books. Yeah. There you, that too. Yeah. All right. We're going to come around, ignore the mess, ignore the mess, and Miss Crystal. I'm messy. So oh, I was talking about our mess, not your mess. Oh, my mess? <laughs> no, just cutting some flowers out of some of the rag paper. And as you can see, it cuts really, really good. Try not to put my, my hot mess on the floor. You and would not be the first and won't be the last. And then these are leaves that were cut with some um, recycled paper. Okay. And then I used some of the um, gilding that Judy sells here on the paper with the glue stick. Oh, very cool, and the gilding plates. And just plates. dabbed it, yep. Mm -hmm. And then just stabbed it on. Um, jelly printed, recycled, good old... I think this is a magazine cover that I had. And so I just gilding flakes, jelly print, and then just die cut it out. Mm -hmm. Wow, very cool. Yep. So that's cool. But this paper cuts like butter. All the little scraps of butterfly. Mm -hmm. And the little butterfly. Is that all connected? Oh, wow. Mm -mm. Yeah. Yep. Oh, the pieces, yeah. Very cool. So nice little butterfly. But I love the paper. Come back to Chris and Sharon. Are we all set? <laughs> <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> set the scene. <laughs> all right. So um, we're back to fabric. Um, I told you that we had that uh, that festive bundle that uh, had two panels in it, and we have you can buy the full bundle or you can buy um, the separate. This one is the bundle with the tree. And you get six fabrics, uh, have fat quarters. And this is the quilt that I made using the bundle, uh, the tree panel. And actually, I think this was a Christmas in July um, where I was trying to decide what I was going to do with it. And deadlines are wonderful things. I finished it this afternoon. It actually <laughs> doesn't even have the binding on it yet. But yet, you know, deadlines work. Um, <laughs> But one of the things I wanted to say is, I showed when we showed you um, Barbara's quilt, she didn't use the fabrics in the bundle, which, um, and I didn't either in finishing my quilt. What I used was actually fabric from this absolutely luscious uh, bundle of uh, Fat Quarters Pearl Light. There's 28 pieces of fabric. And I think one of the things that I really want to point out with this is the fact that you don't have to use a bundle like this and people say, oh my God, what would I do with all that fabric? I mean, look at those colors. They're just wonderful. It's absolutely perfect with the panel. It really should have gone with the panel. <laughs> so it could not work better if it tried. I used it with the panel, but this is another quilt that I used some of the fabric on. And this is a Dear Stella uh, fabric from the Stripology Mixology. So that's the, the Stella quilt. Um, I use some of the fabrics this way. And then I actually have 
a quilt hanging in my family room using the, the blues and the greens and the creams. So I've gotten, so far I've gotten three projects using an absolutely gorgeous bundle. Unfortunately, I still have some, so there will be a few more projects to come out of it because I just absolutely love it. Um, I can't believe we still have some of these bundles because they're gorgeous. But another um, bundle that would work very well with this panel is this uh, morning mist. Th this is batik, and you can mix batik with regular fabric. It's not a taboo. Some people think you could use either one or the other, but look at the colors in that. Again, it picks up the colors in the trees here. This would be absolutely perfect. You could make a larger quilt. And if you'll notice, the panel is much larger than the piece. I cut the piece off because I wanted a smaller wall hanging. So I cut a good portion of this bottom and the top off. So you've got a lot to play with in this panel. And I did um, straight stitching. I think th this would also be awesome with some really fun machine work. You could put some beads, you could do some hand stitching. There's a lot happening in this panel. I think it's absolutely gorgeous panel. I love the colors in it. I think you really bought out the colors in it with your choice though. I, I, I honestly, when, when we, I first saw it, it didn't appeal to me as much, but I love what you've done. And, well, I tried and to you do see the non-traditional colors and you really see the light coming through it. Well, the and that's really what I, I was trying like, okay, let's let's use these. This is more in the, the sky and this was the blue. So yeah. yes. So no, the panel doesn't come just by itself. We are selling it with six um, fat quarters. If you choose not to use them, what do you do with these fat quarters? I made gift bags. <laughs> and they don't have to be holiday gift bags. They could be any kind of gift bags. They actually, it's a free pattern. It's called origami bags. You're t you take two fat quarters, you lay them side by side. The directions are very easy. It probably takes about 15 minutes to, to put one together. Um, you fold it over, you stitch it down. I use some silk t uh, little ties that we can carry. This one, I actually think I use these two fabrics. And to me, this isn't doesn't scream Christmas, it's winter. And I use some sari silk for my for my handle on this one. So the pattern shows you, tells you two different sizes. Easy to make and a great way to use some fabric. Nice thing about this pattern too, uh, Gundaren of GE Designs, it, it was her, um, a, a free gift, it's a free download. But for people who are not quite paper written descript um, she's got a instruction, video, yeah. she's got a video on, on her channel. So there's two two ways to sort of absorb the knowledge. Chris has made many that we've seen over the years, and it's just a great little pattern. Well, it's a super cute bag. I used them last year for all my gifts to my uh, sisters and nieces, and they all had something in them. Um, and then they can repurpose them this year. They could either use them themselves, I mean, it's a, a good little travel jewelry bag, um, or they can repurpose and give a gift this year. And so going along with winter Thanksgiving, fabric people, lots of us are in guilds. Lots of us have, uh, potlucks or gatherings over the holidays with our guilds or our quilting or our sewing friends. So why not make some gifts for your friends, your sewing friends? This is a so good fat quarter bundle. Cutest Just thing. Oh Just oh, adorable. <laughs> Half yard. Half yard cut bundles. <laughs> Christmas Did you hear that stage whisper? Our, our producer's getting really annoyed with us. <laughs> we're, we're, we're there. I'm looking we right. We are trying. I'm looking right at it. I think it's too expensive sometimes. Yes, yes, that's yes. true. But the, it's still cute fabric. And now you get more of it than And you said. can make lots of projects with it, which I've done. 
So actually this one, um, this, I had chosen this one, but I think this one would have been a better choice myself. Um, I don't know why I didn't take that one when I, when I made this this summer. It's, it's still super cute. So this one is not the same bag that I showed you earlier. This one is actually, it's called the hand stitch um, round bottom bag. You don't have to hand stitch it. I machine stitch mine. Um, though I did add some embellishments and what I used are these really fun polymer clay buttons. Colors are perfect with this. And so I sewed the buttons on and then I also stitched some of the buttons, did some hand stitching, um, just played with it a little bit. Not much, you know, I think I was sitting at the beach with my sewing friends um, and put it together. Feel free. And I just need a little bit of ribbon to, to put that through and this would make a great uh, knitting project bag. It's so cute for a sewing studio, I'm thinking, you know, toss your... Well, I actually have one in my studio with different fabric <laughs> that I have um, spools of thread in because I have more spools of thread. That's what happens when you work in the fabric store. Um, <laughs> then fits on my spool <laughs> on my my spool rack. So I have a whole bunch of them sitting in there. And then another project that I did, and this is called the Japanese knot bag. I didn't print out a free pattern because all you need to do is search for Japanese knot bag and there's probably 15 different ways to make this and different patterns but it's a cute little it's basically just reversible it's very easy to do I hand embellished with some just a little hand stitching instead of um, machine edge stitching but a good another good use of the fabric but I think these would make great gifts for your sewing friends, your knitting friends. Okay. This would be a nice, um, so many um, areas are banning the plastic bags and you, they want you to use the, you know, ecologically sound, but for just a tiny little trip because of the, the formatting, your, your stuff is yep. kept pretty safe. So if you're just grabbing a few little things, it's, well, a, it's a nice little. Speaking of shopping bags, the other <laughs> pattern that we have is the slip handle gusset um, bag, uh, also by Casey Stevens. Um, she really writes great instructions. Um, she's embellished them with some, uh, some different fabrics. It's got a nice little handle on it. Again, it's great for projects, but great to carry to the store. And these would, these would really work well um, to put together. You can mix and match your fabrics. You don't need to make the whole outside, all one fabric, you can mix and match them. Any questions? Jen, any questions? No, but um, people said cute bag, nice fabric. <laughs> they are. Got it? All right. You need to head back to our audience participation as we make another <laughs> switch <change>. here. <laughs> all right. And coming around. What progress have we made? A couple of cards oh, here. Oh, right. Fall. Man, you're working quick. And Christmas. All right. That was very cool. A little stamp and. I like the splotch. Cut out. Splotch. Yeah. Okay. Over here. Well, it looks the same as before, but it's not. <laughs> because I did. I do like the stencil butter, so that's on there. And now I can glue my other things on here. So, mm -hmm. so eventually I'll get from Halloween to Christmas. Just take. All some. right. I Susan. just used um, Steema Seam Two to glue down my fabric pieces. Okay. With the with the goddess sheets. Goddess sheets. Yeah. Awesome. Because I'm a goddess. Yes, we all are. Well, not me, but the rest of you. And I <laughs> am now cutting out just nice little tiny detailed words for the card makers. Ooh. Is that my Christmas? Yep. This is my Christmas. Let's just, yeah, let's hold that up so we can get a little... We saw it back on one of the other cards, but there you go. So we have the Mary. I have a red Mary to go oh. on there. Okay. Do you want it all going? 
Oh, well, I'm still with people can see where the. I was gonna say you can't put red on red, but you can put. Um, red on I have my little. Here, here we go. Oh, it's a directional mic. It's fine. <laughs> oh, okay, there we go. Oh, yeah. All right, I see what you mean. Yep. Now, a very delicate gluing job is going to ensue. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's Mary. Suzanne. Okay. We do gold. Mm-hmm. What are you doing with the tool there? I'm um, picking out those little pieces. Okay. So she gets a nice, clean Mary. This will poke out all those little... Yeah. And you're saying after the vacuum, right? I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. It's like home. Just put it on the floor. Yeah, yeah it's fine. That's what I do. Yeah. These are great. Oh, this is very cool. This little thing right here. Nice detail. Steal this for a second. Mm -hmm. But uh, the stencil butter is not only limited to paper, we can also do it on fabric. Yes. Real mixed media. Yes. Judy approves of that. And we do too. It acts like a paint and a texture as well. I mean, you can. Sorry? You can use it as a paint. Yes. Because mm -hmm. it spreads nicely. Uh, we've done a few demos of that. Yes. Uh, uh, they're all up on our YouTube page with artistic artifacts. And it uh, looks like. We're not quite ready yet. We are. Oh, we're we're ready. Ready. <laughs> <laughs> Jen, any Live questions? <laughs> no, everyone, I think, is taking in our controlled chaos. <laughs> That's, That's a good word. Normal. That's a good word for it. It's funny they think it's what controlled. What does the videographer look like? Oh, he's oh, cute. Come on. Come on. <laughs> All right, hold on. Let me. Hello. <laughs> Yeah, you're right. I haven't accidentally turned the camera around in a while. <laughs> I got a haircut from the last time. All right. Some Christmas boxes. Woodblock stamps. Very cool. Cape edition. Woodblocks. And speaking of holidays, look at these hearts. Can somebody really, really planning ahead can start making some Valentine's gifts with the. Everyone is saying hello, Kyle. Oh, hello, everybody. <laughs> okay. Well, the other thing with the hearts, when there's actually that Mel Beach is having that um, hearts challenge. That's in Quilting's Arts this Quilting month. Quilting Arts. Yeah, so. um, and I think we might be doing that challenge as part of the Creative Minds. I think we were supposed to do it in October and we canceled because we were exhausted. <laughs> Keith nearly killed us, y'all. <laughs> mm -hmm. Slept for a week. <laughs> oh, if only. So, where are we starting with? We got kind of a mixed media hodgepodge here. Okay, so let's start with with our. This is a special new item. This is something that you saw. Uh, we photographed this early. This is our. Are we calling this a treasure box, you guys? Yes. Holiday treasure box full of mixed media ephemera. And there is all kinds of stuff in here. We've got some little fabric, some um, found paper that's similar to like our paper collage box, po boxes and packs. We've got some great sequins, beads, bells, because of course you need some jingle bells. A Pico embellisher, which is a great way to add some detail. Little dots in the right. There's there's some cards, buttons. There's some Indian paper. Yeah. There's some gold. This is gold leaf, isn't it? That's uh, foiling. Foiling. Okay. Oh. Um, got some origami paper in different colors and patterns. So we've got like shapes and circles. Yeah. This whole bottom is full. So there's some vintage wrapping paper, which is really cool. We got this packed, y'all. <laughs> I'm not even sure. <laughs> so yeah, it's a great variety of the rag paper that I can't even get all of it out, but we did pull through for things that looked kind of 
celebration and holiday. So just take my word for it. There's a lot in there. <laughs> Make sure you have nails. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm sure it would come out, but of course I'm nervous on camera, so I'm messing it up. But there is so much that can be done with this. This is perfect for ATCs that you saw me talk about. Cards. Um, Decorations for your tree. There's so many uh, wooden shapes and uh, paper mache shapes that could be covered with these. Uh, little beads and sequins and ribbons and sparkle. Um, a great box too to give as a gift to anybody who's crafty. Um, anyone who's got kids who like to, I mean, just imagine just dumping this in the center and sort of like how we dumped everything over there and we're letting them go to town. Um, so that is really, Fun and special. You have that. Um, and I think um, we marked the other treasure boxes down. Yes. You know what I forgot to say? Huh? What? No, everything's 15% <gasps> off did tonight. That tell you that? <laughs> wow, you're right. <laughs> Judy is so much better at this than <laughs> she's a salesperson. <laughs> Yeah, so all this blathering on we've done and we haven't told you that you will save if you order tonight. 24 so. hours and go till 7 p.m. tomorrow night. That's awesome. Okay, let's put that in there. Yeah, put that so it stays. Um, so mm -hmm. I had gone by the ATCs. We also have our um, the ATCs in this, again, great box in white. So that's perfect for um, snowy scenes and, and the winter and sparkle. We've got some great mixed media tags here. Uh, at the holiday time, you're giving gifts. It's wonderful to hand make your own tags, whether you're stamping someone's name, collaging it. Um, you can even make a little tag journal. That's a fun way to make books. And again, tags can hang really beautifully from a tree. These are our cards. And I wanted to show you what Chris did. Chris, this is, a chem this is part of a fabric box. Pack, right it's coming the, it's coming okay well I, I it's mixed media so I'm gonna show you that she used the cards <laughs> and she will tell you well about no, no. What she did it's, they're just um, I use my fabric scraps again how do you use uh, you know make the best use of your fabric cut the designs up and just collage them with some misty views onto cards so I've got some, not only do I have Thanksgiving cards I've got my Christmas cards and you guys are going to, again, live television, you're going to see an experiment here. We we tried uh, stamping on one of, um, or using a block print on one of Chris's cards, but because there's fabric in layers, the card, it, it wasn't quite as complete a, a print as we'd like. And so I have gone over that with the Cosmic Shimmer Flakes and Glitter Glue. And this is a special glue. I did a uh, Facebook Live a um, couple months back. I'm not sure when. Sorry, time is a blur this year. Um, and demonstrated the flakes. And at the time, we, we actually were short the medium. It's a special medium because it, it, it does not dry completely. Um, it stays tacky. You can see, you can even kind of feel and hear my finger sticking to it. So I went over where the snowflake print should have been. I did a few little dots on the tree. Now, the experiment is I have not yet used flakes on fabric, so we're gonna see what's gonna happen. <laughs> um, do not sneeze or, <laughs> you know, if you've got a cold, do not work with flakes. Um, they are super, super, super light. Just wisps. Um, and what you do is just the glue takes um, different levels of time to dry, depends on how thickly it's applied. It, it has kind of a bluish cast when it goes on, but it does dry clear, but that blue actually lets you know that it's not it's not dry yet. And then you're just the blue's not really coming up on the camera, but it's No, it, it's it's clear. So and so this is a little bit messy, but that also could have been my application. But you see that that's sticking. And I think with fabric, what we'd have to do is really 
break it up with like a brush, see how it's coming off. So let's try it here where it's just pretty much only on the card. It might be a bit easier to see. And the flakes, obviously, they don't go bad. So anything that's left on your sheet and that you brush off, you're just returning to your jar and it's there for the next project. I was trying to get really fine lines. I sort of succeeded and sort of didn't. I think with enough time fiddling with it, it'll be cute. But it's a really, really fun way to add some really, really vibrant. I'm curious whether I it definitely came out. So it's sticking just to the glue. And this the glue will stay tacky. It's not something that you've got to kind of hurry to do. What you have to do is sort of cover it with something because otherwise it's almost got a consistency of like you know, rubber like furniture bumper type of situation once it dries. Again, with a brush, I think I could really get all this extra off. It's kind of clinging because the fabric's got a, a nap. But gilding flakes are a really fun way to add sparkle and shine to tons of stuff. You can sponge this glue on um, a stamp. You kind of have to work a little bit quickly so it doesn't dry on your stamp. Um, so you can get some very, despite what I just showed you, you can get some very precise effects with it. Um, but it does take a little bit of finesse and working. So we'll fix this up and we'll, we'll post a picture so you see that I'm not making that up. It's in my hair. Of course, <laughs> it's in my hair, Kyle. <laughs> it, it will. It Can't will get everywhere. Uh, we didn't talk about the woodblocks yet. I don't think. No, no. I, I just wanted. That's to okay. This. So this is our our new holiday set of woodblocks. Um, so what she was using was a, one of the the snowflakes from the uh, the set, but the trees um, you can actually woodblock on paper fabric. Um, we've seen some really nice on wool, so we had like the Sue Spargo, uh, that nice fine Sue Spargo uh, wool. Th these would be nice on there. And um, Jennifer Moore from Aster and Ann, she actually uses some wood blocks on the um, felt kits that we don't have included tonight, but her pre cut uh, felt bags, she does some wood block printing on those. Yeah. And of course, they would go with the paints. So we've got paints for the blocks. All right. And a reminder that we the name is the textile paints, um, but remember, paper is a textile. Paper is made out of a product. So our paints are really artist grade, beautifully pigmented. They blend beautifully. Um, and they can go on almost any pore surface, not just, not just fabric and not just paper, wood, and they canvas. Heat, they heat set on, on fabric, so they're they're good if you're using them um, on, on fabric. On garments, yeah. yeah. So you can you can wash and dry, you can even dry oh, clean. Fit for Art it's has used them on um, their knit fabrics and their garments yeah. and, and a border. Okay. Yeah, I All think. Right. We sort of <laughs> okay, we're going to do a couple things next. Um, I think there was a question about the quilt behind me. This is one of the three yard quilts. Um, Fabric Cafe has a number of books that the top of the quilt re requires three yards of fabric. So this one we have a fun bundle of wintery fabric. A little bit Christmassy, but uh, n doesn't scream Christmas because of it's the got the blues and the whites in it. And it has cats. And it has cats, of course. If I make it, it probably has cats on <laughs> it. So um, that's the three-yard quilt. 
it does require that when you buy the bundle that you would probably need to buy some additional fabric for the back. I don't, it, it usually says about three and something for the backing, but I usually use my fabric to piece, so I usually get by with like two yards of extra fabric. Um, this coordinates with it, so it's a fun, um, this would also be a fun sw uh, one for a knitter because it's got all these fun Theral sweaters. We've got a bunch of the, um, this particular pattern was, button box and actually in the in the book the button box is made with cave fabric so um it doesn't lend itself just to one type of yeah, you can do it for any really cute little pattern yeah it's a, they're, they're great and we've got more than one bundle in there we probably have five or six different one yard or, or uh, it's three one yard um cuts and then um I, I miss these because again, I took them off the table. <laughs> but we do have this is vintage holiday um, wrapping paper, and of course, because Judy puts these packs together, you get some little extras as well. So, and that's the last um, of them. Last She's used of all them. her vintage um, papers up. So, but these are and a lot of fun to, yeah, bells are in there. <laughs> Um, a lot of fun. The, the color and the graphics are just really wonderful. So they're a lot of fun to um, use in your paper projects. So. All right. And so the other, um, I'm just going to show quickly that this is, unfortunately, this particular pattern of Sashiko um, we're out of. But what I wanted to show was we've got a number of more this says holy night but really it is it's snowflakes um and i think this one would be beautiful done in, in blues and whites mm -hmm. we have season's greetings and that one actually comes in a couple colors and then we also have the uh, snowflakes And the, here's a, a holy night that's the same. We've put together, um, these are Sashiko threads that it would be fun to use with any of them. But what I use, I, and this particular one, I used a combination of Eleganza and I used a couple um, of Painter's Thread Metallics for my Christmas ball. So any of it works. They're fun to, oh, I forgot some tree, um, a couple snowflakes. But it's a very, very simple. All you're doing is it's a straight stitch. You're following the pattern. There's no, um, no complicated stitching. It's just a running stitch. It's, but any of these Eleganza packs, I think some of these colors would look beautiful in this holy night. Um, but we've got three different colorways in these Eleganzas. In addition to on, on the website, we've got other, other sets and individual packs. The great thing about these is um, these make great gifts to somebody that you know who likes to stitch. They make a great gift after you stitch it yourself and you've gotten the relaxation and the enjoyment of working with it. Uh, turn it into a pillow, frame it. Yeah, um, what I'm added to a quilt block, the center, but um, so e either way, this is can be something that's really treasured. We have a lot of people come in and, um, a few days in the store uh, and get them for beginners. Oh yeah, it is. It's great. Because it's, it's just a per, it's just a, a straight running stitch, and you're literally you think just about it. it's, stitching. It's very, it's very meditative, very zen, very calming. So this and during the them. holiday season, who doesn't need a little calming? It's a coloring book, but for stitching. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> And this I mean, isn't perfect. on. This fabric isn't on. We have it in the in the store, but I just thought that would be perfect, and so that's how that will end up. All right, on to the next project. <laughs> Let's see what we have here. All right, and we'll be back <laughs> and one more round. All right, what oh, new right, things guys. do you have for us? A couple more. I can't oh, exactly you what did one you should. Do. Sorry? I can't remember exactly what ones you saw last time. Um, I don't remember if that one was in it. That one 
Wonder the Wonderland card is very cool. Mm -hmm. um, I'm glad someone did something with the butterfly. The three D is very cool. Yeah, it turned out really nice. Little name tag or gift tag. All right, and over here. Finished another one. Okay. Instead of gonna turn tag. it into a gift tag. All right. Uh, more stencil butter. More stencil butter. And Indian paper with stitching on it. You can never have too much stencil butter. No. Yeah. Oh. All right. Finished my little card. Oh, you did. All right. And you went with the gold. Very nice. Right. But I put the Mary in his, in his bonnet. Oh, there it is. Oh, okay. <laughs> and uh, I ha don't have another blank, but I'm going to make a um, Christmas tree. This was um, stays on, rubbed over, embossed paper. Okay. Right. And coming over to Crystal, there's our scrap table. All right, new stuff. Yeah, embossing on some rag paper. So okay. I don't know if you can see that. Very nice. Yeah, so come out really good. Nice deep impressions. So oh, here, that's a, that's something new. What is this? What's that? Little stuff. Oh, those are, um, some hearts and flowers. I don't know why, but they, it's very like this one, very Dr. Seuss. I, I, right? This one too. Yeah. yeah. And then we got some little houses, some coral mm -hmm. looking, or tree, it. depending. Let's see it. Um, usually I'll cut it in two different colors and insert the other color. Mm -hmm. yeah. It works on foil too, right? It does. Because we have the deco foil here. It does. Mm. Deco. Okay. Let's see. And that's with the flakes again. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think you saw that one already. Yeah. So but they're so the cool. Flakes. I love those. All right. Flakes and a glue stick. Who would have thought it? All right. Thank you. Oh, you know right. what? Are you about to put one in? I am. Show them how it works. Know. And it's that easy. Mm -hmm. Gives you a nice deep. All right. Very cool. Okay. Thank you. And we'll go see if everybody is ready. Yep. All right. <laughs> Jen, <laughs> questions? <laughs> No? Okay. <laughs> Somebody was a little ambitious with the scenery changing. I, I, I knew we were doing two. I was, I was unaware of the a couple extras. <laughs> All right. So, we talked about bags before. So, this is the origami bag. Great, uh, these are fat quarter bundles. These make these. So we've got a dark set and a light set. This is the little round um, bag that I showed you before. Uh, of course, it's cat fabric. Um, we don't have the cat fabric, but we do have pugs. This is by Very the yard. happy little pugs. This is, <laughs> this is by the yard. And we have dinosaurs. All right. And winter mermaids, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> they are Arctic mermaids. They are swimming with the seals. And there's a narwhal and little ice trees. And I cannot stand it. It's so cute. So a bunch of the projects that we've shown tonight, these would be fun on the cards. These would be fun in bags. So. Um, and then for this, I added some hexagons with fabric, with the lining fabric, and used some of these uh, Sue Spargo templates to cut my hexagons. And these are really fun. Um, there's multiple sizes, so it's not just one template, which is better than, yeah. I think, some of the paper piecing ones where you only get one size. I mean, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine different sizes of circles here but you could cut your own circles with uh the sue spargo wool that we have on yep. um on tonight so lots of lots of options for that 
All right. <laughs> Next, I think we'll do the Christmas squad. Oh. So you saw these in my uh, my Christmas cards. So this is the the fabric. And I, what I did for the Christmas cards was I just cut them out and fused them. But I used them in a table runner or wall hanging with the complementary fabrics. And again, I like to make my table runners double-sided. This would actually get you into the winter, Valentine's Day. Um, you know, it's got winter Fair Isle sweaters, snowflakes. It's just gorgeous, gorgeous fabric. And what I love about the cards, I know you're, we're doing the fabrics, and, and Chris, Chris makes the fabric projects so easy. She puts together the beautiful bundles. We use simple patterns, but they're very effective. But it's it's so nice to show that sometimes if you just fall in love with the fabric and you don't know what to do with it, you don't have to have a sewing machine handy. You can use it. You can remember it and keep it and gift it. it they, I just cannot get over how cute these cards are. And of course, I'm making another bag. Oh, of course she is. <laughs> but what I wanted to show is, this is the little round bo bottom one, so I've shown that a couple different times. Um, the pattern comes with it, a paper pattern um, with a round bottom. If you cut the notches, it tells you where to match them up with the seams. I use Wonder Clips. And I, they are so handy for so I many mean, it, different it's things. a hand stitching pattern, but I actually just put this under my machine. I do a half inch um, seam, and then you're able to turn it around once it's sewn. And you've got your bottom, and of course, I've used uh, some more of my fabric. So that'll be a gift bag. Is that a hedgehog? Is that what that is? I don't know. I think so. <laughs> it's not a cat. <laughs> um, just to mention, we do have some uh, packs that we put together of painter's thread that include some um, cloth, some threads. Um, so those are up. You can check those out. I love stitching with uh, the painter's thread. These are really beautiful. They have the beads with it, and everything's color coordinated. So it's rich, saturated colors for the fall and the winter as you're working on a stitch project. They just look cozy and lush. And then we have the O oh Christmas Tree panel. So this is the panel. Um, this bundle has uh, these two fabrics in one and a half yards. So the bundle has three and a half yards of fabric. It's got half yard of the green and one and a half of the, the two. Why I did it that way is this is a directional fabric and I wanted the, the ornaments to go up and down in the same direction all the way around. So you'll have fabric left over and Chris is giving you how many ideas for a fabric left over? <laughs> oh no, I... Well, yeah, Chris doesn't have fabric left over, sorry. <laughs> All the fabric. I misspoke. It, 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 I was able to put it together for the so. So you're. Backing. I was able to get the uh, the front and the back with with Wonderful. the fabric. Yeah. And the last project is this panel, which is just Ooh, so cute. cute. This one's O oh Santa, and I wasn't real enamored with this at first. I mean, it's cute, but I wasn't, it was like, oh, I don't know what I'm going to do with that. So there's four, four squares and then the center panel. Look at that wonderful mixed media look there with the little bits of text and the layering of the imagery. So Judy, you know, kept saying, oh, it needs to be a garland. It needs to be a garland. So I thought, okay, I'll make a garland. So I took the four squares and cut them down. I left some of the trim on, and then I used Steam -a Seam 2. So I fused the uh, fabric onto the back, and then I trimmed it. Um, I will probably do a little decorative stitching around the edge. Um, maybe put some sequins on it. So I've got the four squares. I going to use the snowflake ribbon for the garland. Oh, perfect. But I might hang the garland 
up and down and then I could sew the ribbon that way and attach them that way but um, this is on this I thought it was a perfect ribbon for it and then the center panel I use the same fabrics and cut I think I cut one inch of that and two inch of that so I was I able to get mint stripe it's I was able so to get cute. the backs of these and that with with this I still have this left over and I'm going to make a tempo runner with that beautiful so it's a fun collection and I think somebody was was somebody making uh, one of the cards with that tonight I don't know but uh, the this fabric maybe because one of the things that I think I'm going to do is cut some of these these designs out and put them on more cards. <laughs> so, all right, all right. <laughs> 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 I hope we sold a lot because we worked hard for this tonight. <laughs> well, we're also having 70 degree November weather, so yeah, it's a little bit. Uh, warm. It, it's it's warm in here. Um, the 15% off will be good through 7 o'clock tomorrow night. So tell your friends um, if they missed it, they can go back. When you're on the app, you can actually, if there's a particular product that you want to see, you don't have to watch the whole video. You don't need to watch Sharon and I um, struggle. <laughs> make fools of ourselves this evening. <laughs> you can go to the particular project. So if you see this, the old Christmas tree panel bundle, you can see the bundle, you can see the different products on there um, that way. The other thing I think we'll close with is we do have a Facebook Live on Saturday morning. Mm -hmm. um, Dudley, who will be teaching a beginning quilting class in January, will talk about some of the techniques that a beginner quilter needs to know, but she will also be introducing um, the quilts that we have in our charity fundraiser this year. We are, um, this year it is for lymphoma. Leukemia and lymphoma. Le leukemia and lymphoma. Um, the last couple years we've been able to um, get about $5,000 donation to the charity. Um, this is a personal interest to Kyle. Um, he has a friend whose family um, does fundraising, so this one is a per personal interest. Mm -hmm. And these are quilts of Judy's that um, Dudley piece the one. The Dudley did the but otherwise they're all Judy's quilts. And so, so. what if you uh, for each ten dollar donation, you will get a chance, and you can pick which quilt you would like to have a, a chance to win. It's not a raffle. It's not an, a silent auction. It's just you're making a donation. Um, you can make. $10, make a $40 donation and put uh, 10 on, you know, one on each one. So we, uh, Dudley will be showing those quilts yeah. on. on and, and Kyle will speak a little bit more about uh, his friend's experience and what they've done. And you'll get a chance to see them up close too, which it's difficult with the website. You, uh, some, some of the larger ones, you, you've got to show the whole quilt and we're trying to sh show you some of the really beautiful details. We've got you know a, a real gamut we've got a little art quilt and we've got um, a petite panel quilt we've got Dudley's very modern um, fabric one um, so there's really okay. there's got to be there's got to be one there that yes. you're that mm -hmm. you'll want to have okay so um, thank you the 12th oh and oh. the 12th for those who, who live locally we actually have a handmade market here um, on November 12th there will probably be uh, prob I think about 12 of us who um, kind of hang out at the store on a somewhat regular basis and we'll be selling our handmade items upstairs um, on the second floor and we'll be having some specials in the shop as well so it, it'll be a fun day for, for our local followers all right and thank you to our studio audience here they yeah doing they put great my, work they put my hard work to shame well, well, you know, know it was, you know, I've done it for so who's showing us how really, really gorgeous the, I, I just can't get over how wonderful the, the Indian um, rag, the block printed paper cuts and embosses yeah, and beautiful. it's, um, hopefully we've inspired you with those. So thank you.